Alright, so I may have lied to you guys just a little bit, but not on purpose, I promise. I think at least for the time being, if we want to have a right-click detectable item that doesn't get consumed, we are going to have to stick with carrot on a stick. Oh, past me, how little you knew. In my last video, I talked about right-click detection using knowledge books, and that video sparked let's say, a good bit of conversation. Thank you all so much for your enthusiasm, I love you all. However, through all of that passionate discussion down in the comment section, there was one commenter who showed me something game-changing. But first, let me give you guys a bit of context. So a couple snapshots ago, Mojang added this new item component called food. You can specify how much nutrition and saturation you get from eating any item in the game. And one other cool thing you can customize is how long it actually takes you to eat that food. So if I set eat seconds to 1.6, well, that's the default value. And if I eat this item, it'll take exactly the normal amount of time to eat it. Now this eat seconds field is often set to a lower value, like I don't exactly know how low, but something significantly lower, so that you can eat things pretty quickly, like dried kilt, for example. Now when they added this, I thought, well hey, that's right-click detection. Except I was thinking this jokingly. While there is an advancement trigger that can detect while you're eating food, I figured that in order to trigger that advancement, you'd have to just be constantly playing the eating animation. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't really want to be casting spells while eating my magic wand. So something about that doesn't really seem right. However, in the comment section of my last video, a user called Satwer, I, I'm sorry if I'm saying your name wrong, pointed out that if you set that eat seconds field to a high enough value, the animation just won't play. So this was fascinating fascinating to me, I had to go test it out. It actually turns out that if you set the eat seconds to something significantly higher than the default, like I'll just set it to 5 to start, it actually slows down the initial arm animation. At 20 seconds, this arm animation is ridiculously slow. And there, I just now started eating. So theoretically, if you were to set this value to something ridiculously high, like, I don't know, a million, well, then you could just hold down right click on this item and it won't move toward your mouth. It'll be like you're just holding down right click on any other item that's not food. This is like I said, game-changing. And needless to say, I've already made right-click detection out of it. To start, I have this recipe for a continuous flame wand, which is crafted with a blaze rod and a few blaze powder. If I just pick this up and put it in my main hand, then whenever I right-click, it'll just play little flames. So yeah, that's it. This is tickless right-click detection. Done and done. I don't even know why you're gonna watch the rest of this video. Please don't click away, I'm sorry. The inner workings of the data pack are incredibly simple. It's just an advancement for using the continuous wand, which detects when you're using a wand with this custom data on it, and then gives you this function, which revokes the advancement, and then plays flame particles in front of your face. Just textbook utility advancement. However, in the last video, I was very strictly comparing my right click detection to what we previously had with the carrot on a stick. And with this wand, you might have noticed something a little bit different. The function only specifies that one part particles should be spawned at a time. And when I hold down right click with this wand, the particles come very, very quickly. The reason for this is that the using item trigger actually triggers every single tick as long as you're holding down right click. So this wand triggers much faster than a carrot on a stick normally does. If that's what you're after, then great awesome, but I have a feeling that there's at least some instances when you'd want something that triggers a little bit more slowly than that. And that is why I have gone ahead and made this next item, the burst charm. If I put it in my main hand, I can hold down right click, and as you can see, the bursts are happening way slower than once every tick. So yeah, I've figured out how to put a delay on these. Now this one uses a data pack technique that I don't think I've ever seen anyone else use before. I use it myself all the time, uh, so hopefully I am introducing a new concept here for you guys. Just as before, there's an advancement that simply detects when when you're using the burst charm and then gives you a function. However, this function isn't quite the same as before. As you can see, the function runs the particle command and then it doesn't revoke its own advancement. It revokes a different advancement called tutorial burst cooldown. And then it also sets this scoreboard objective burst cooldown to 10 on me. Now that other advancement is the key here. If I actually open up that advancement, it's the one called burst cooldown. It's a very simple advancement. It simply triggers on the next tick and then gives me a function. And this is what that function looks like. And I'm gonna explain it in more detail in just a second. But first, I want to answer a question that probably a lot of you already have. You're trying to make right-click detection that doesn't require constant ticks, but you've just introduced a ticking advancement, so how is that any better? Well, here's the thing. Most of the time, this burst cooldown advancement actually stays granted on me. It doesn't automatically revoke itself every time. And in particular, if I've just joined the world and the advancement hasn't been granted to me yet, well, it'll trigger on the next tick. And that's what this first command covers. It tests to see if I'm actively using the burst charm by whether or not I still have that advancement granted on me. And if I don't, then the function just returns and the advancement stays granted. Now, the key thing here is that when an advancement is granted on the player, 
it will completely stop ticking. So if this command runs, the function will simply return, the advancement won't get revoked, and it'll be granted on me, therefore it'll stop ticking. But if I am actively using the burst charm, then the rest of the function can continue. First, it removes one point of burst cooldown from me. And then if it detects that I still have at least one point of burst cooldown, it'll return by revoking this same ticking advancement so that it can tick again on the next tick. Now this happens every tick until my score of burst cooldown reaches zero, at which point I get taken off the scoreboard for burst cooldown, and finally this advancement revokes the initial burst charm advancement, which by the way was never revoked before. Like I said, if an advancement is granted on the player, it won't tick, and this is the magic here. I'm gonna go ahead and set the scoreboard objective to show in the sidebar. There we go. And now you can see that while I'm holding this nether star, the burst cooldown is continuously ticking down from 10 every single time, and only once it reaches zero does the burst actually happen again. The reason for this is that as long as that ticking advancement is still ticking, the advancement that detects whether or not I'm using the burst charm stays granted on me, and therefore it can no longer do anything. It can no longer detect that I'm actually using this item. And then of course, once the ticking finishes, the advancement gets revoked again so it can start detecting my item use again. And that is the gist of how this item works. The cooldown for how long it takes for me to be able to use the item again can be freely edited by just changing this number, and if I set it to 4, in my experience, that effectively recreates the rate at which you can just hold down right click on a carrot on a stick. But I could even set it up to a really high value if I wanted. 100 would be 5 seconds in between uses, maybe a really powerful item. So yeah, that's about it for the burst charm. And by the way, I will be leaving this data pack down in the description. If you didn't really follow anything from my explanation, that's fine. You can just go ahead and go download it and see for yourself if you want to play around with it. But this isn't the only type of right click detection I made. No, no, I actually made one more. There's one final recipe I made, which is the impulse gem, which I'm only just now realizing is the name of two different Hermitcraft members, but don't worry about that. The reason I called it the Impulse Gem is because it acts on impulses. If I simply right click with it, it'll play some particles, and then if I keep holding it down, uh, it won't do anything else. If I release and then click again, it'll play some more particles. I can actually click with it pretty fast and play a whole bunch of particles, but as long as I'm holding it down, it will never fire twice. I've never really seen anything like this in Minecraft before, I just wanted to make it because I thought it would be cool and potentially really useful. Now how this one works is a little bit more involved, and I will try to explain it to the best of my ability. As before, the advancement simply detects when you're using this item and then gives you a function. This function is just a little bit different, namely the function actually does immediately revoke the advancement that detected when you were using the item. Now this is different from the burst charm, but on top of that it also revokes another one of these cooldown advancements. The cooldown advancement also is just a tick that gives you a function on the next tick. The function you get from the impulse cooldown advancement always starts by just removing one point of this impulse cooldown objective from me, and then it does a similar thing where if it detects I still have at least one point of that objective, it returns and then revokes this impulse cooldown advancement so that it can run again on the next tick. But if I don't have at least one point of impulse cooldown, then the function simply resets my impulse cooldown score, and then the advancement stays granted on me, so it no longer ticks, just like last time. But let's further examine the difference with the actual function I get for using the item. It revokes its own advancement, and it also revokes the impulse cooldown advancement, which means that as long as I am using this gem, it is continuously running every tick. However, the particles are only displayed if I don't have an impulse cooldown score of at least one. So as long as I'm holding down use on this gem, this function is actually running over and over and over again, but the particles only gets played the first time it runs, because at the end of this function it sets my impulse cooldown score to 2, and the particles can only run if I don't have any impulse cooldown. So the gist of what's happening here is that while I am continuously clicking with this item, the game is continuously resetting my cooldown back up to 2 every single tick. I can show you by enabling this, and as long as I'm holding the item, you'll see that my impulse cooldown score stays at 2, but as soon as I release it, it ticks down and I no longer have any cooldown. The particle can only display if it detects that I don't have any cooldown, so therefore it only runs when I initially click, and then no more after that. And again, if you have more questions, go download the data pack, or let me know in the comments, that would be cool too. So yeah, that's it. That's right click detection. Like. We got it, guys, we got it! The only little caveat is that because the game thinks you're trying to eat an item, it actually sets your movement speed pretty low whenever you're holding down click. So similar to what I said in the last video, if that's something you like, then great, but if it's not, then I don't know, we're kind of stuck with it. If you really, really want an item that is right click, not consumable, and doesn't change your movement speed, you may have to just stick with a carrot on a stick. Or like so many of you pointed out in the comments of my last video, you could just use the knowledge book method and give 
give the player back the knowledge book every time, which is not something I particularly like doing, but if that's what you want to do, then go for it. That totally works. So yeah, guys, that's about all there is to it. I thank you guys so much for watching. It means the world to me. I just hit a thousand subscribers, so I love all of you. Let me know down in the comments if you end up using this right-click detection, either this or the knowledge book method, for anything cool in the future. I would love to see you guys' future builds. I'm really excited for 1.20.5. Hopefully it'll be out before I make my next video. I've been Conyer. Thank you all so much for watching, my dudes. Oh, perfect. Another train. Say hi, train. Bye.